Welcome back to the next episode of Rebuilding the Sims in Unreal Engine 5. Last time we built the newbie lot, and this time we are bringing Bob Newbie to life. Recreating Bob took me over a week of work, and as usual, things didn't always go smoothly. This doesn't look like Bob at all. Is it like this in the original too? <laughs> As you might already know, I'm Adam. I've been a huge Sims fan since the very first game, and I also built the multiplayer mod for The Sims 4. It's time to get started. Unreal Engine comes with the modular character creator called MetaHumans. It's super high fidelity, and people use it to make really realistic digital humans. But I'm not a big fan. The resource library is limited, especially for clothing. So instead, I went with Dust Studio, another modular character creator that's way more versatile, and its marketplace has a ton of resources. So I opened up Bob in Blender as a reference and started shaping him in Dust Studio. I found this nice beard that seemed to fit well. Hmm, this doesn't look like Bob at all. He didn't really give me Bob vibes, so I started using more accurate referencing. That worked much better. So I moved on to clothes and set a skin texture that matched his look. I've also set up some animation that we'll later use as morph targets for more realistic animation. With that done, Bob was ready for export. Houdini is a node-based, procedural 3D software that's amazing for preparing the character models for Unreal. It's actually so good that even Dua Lipa made a song about it. In Houdini, I split the model into separate pieces, set up UV layouts, and created morph targets. Then I baked all those separate textures into packed texture atlases. The fewer textures we use, the better the performance will be. Before baking, I also added a bit of dirt to the textures in Photoshop. This beard seems to be too elegant for Bob. I went back to Das for a more trash, more authentic beard. The beard also needed processing in Houdini before going into Unreal as a groom. I also generated occlusion mask textures to hide any parts of the body mesh that would be covered by clothes. Everything was ready. Now Bob could finally make his way into... Bob arrived in Unreal, but he wasn't in great shape yet. First, I meshed the beard to the body, then set up materials using my big textures. I gave him some nice wrinkles, made materials for his lashes and brows, and then I've set up the materials for his eyes. After that, I added some extra shadow and blur to smooth out the corners. I've colored and thickened the beard, and Bob's head was really starting to come together. I imported his clothes and set up their materials. Bob doesn't seem to fit in his skin. To assemble him, I used Unreal's Mutable plugin, which is especially made for modular characters. It's powerful, but still pretty new, so it's a little rough around the edges. I added his body, his clothes, and set up occlusion so his mesh wouldn't poke through the garments. Mutable can also handle grooms, so I added his beard. So I've added his beard later, separately, in the character blueprint. And with that, Bob's appearance was ready. But so far, he just wasn't so interesting yet. To actually bring Bob to life, I needed to animate him. I wanted to use the original animations from the game, but for that, I had to retarget them from old Bob to new Bob. I set up an IK rig for the old character and used Unreal's IK retargeting system. After overcoming the initial issues, his belly shouldn't do that. I imported and retargeted some standing idle animations. Using Control Rig, I corrected the idle stance and created a reusable pose from it, along with the hand poses. Later, I could easily apply those pose corrections to each animation to make them more unified. I also fixed the feet floating around. Once the animations were cleaned up, 
I set up a basic animation blueprint to play idle animations while Bob's just standing in place. I wrote a bit of logic in AngelScript to play one section of simple standing, then one random idle animation. And it worked great. But he was very silent. So I added some. To give Bob a bit more personality, I exported a bunch of humming and sighs. <sighs> then I added some logic to play them randomly. I also laid down the basics of the character activity system, just to make sure these sounds only trigger when Bob's standing still. For that, I used the Logic Driver Pro plugin, a super powerful state machine system for Unreal. Then I added an audio component to Bob, and we were ready to test. <sighs> Is it like this in the original too? <sighs> well, it's meant to be a remake. Now that Bob could stand on his own, it was finally time to teach him how to walk. I started by setting up the movement logic with a state machine based activity. To get him actually moving through the world, I also had to set up a navigation mesh. At first, Bob didn't really walk. He just slid around. Next, I imported the original walking animations from The Sims. I extended the animation blueprint to blend in the walk cycle based on velocity. Using control rig, I also cleaned up the retargeted animations. But movement speed and animation speed don't always match. To sync them up, I used a checker map to fine-tune his pace until the footsteps lined up properly. I also added sound cues with animation notifies. Now Bob could walk, but he still couldn't get inside his house. So I had to add door opening logic using Navlink proxies, but that alone wasn't enough. I even had to tweak the engine source code to make the AI able to open a door. Then I wrote some C++ code besides AngelScript, something I usually try to avoid, because C++ is both error prone and painfully slow to iterate. After all that work, I opened the engine, and my doors were messed up. Once the doors were fixed, Bob could finally walk into his house. To make things feel more alive, I also imported some bird ambient sounds straight from the original game. With that done, it was time for another test run. felt super nostalgic, but I didn't want to stop there, so I decided to add. For Bob's facial animation, I wanted to try motion capture with MetaHuman Animator. It's a tool that only needs an iPhone to record face performances. First, it shamelessly confronted me with how distorted my facial structure is by generating this digital version of my head from some sample footage. Then, from my very professional test recording, it generated a working facial animation. I retargeted that onto Bob to test the new workflow, and it actually worked pretty well. So I recorded a few more performances like this. Subscribe to the channel now. Again, I polished the retargeted animations with Control Rig to clean up the issues. And from there, Bob's facial animations were ready to use. Well, it's better than nothing. But when I took a closer look, something wasn't right. He looked very sad. <laughs> Until... And that's it for this episode. Don't forget to like and comment and see you in the next one.